Hey guys, how's it go? Wait. Hold up, I changed the background. Much better. So, the year is coming to a close and people are starting to put up their top 10 favorites and their least favorite films of 2017. But as you all know, I am the biggest horror buff of the crew and last year I did a top 5 favorite horror films of 2016. You guys seem to really dig that one, so I decided to come back this year to do another top horror films video but this year I'm not doing a top five I'm doing a top 10 favorite horror films of 2017. Now before I go on I want to establish a few ground rules for you guys. First thing is that these are not reviews of the horror films that I have seen this year. If you guys want to see the reviews of the horror films that are on this list please go check out my 2017 playlist. Next thing is that these are my personal opinions. I realize that all the horror films on my list are not going to be the same horror films that you guys love. And last but not least let's just have some fun here guys. Let's have some fun gushing about the horror films that we not only love but the horror films that scared the fuck out of us and before i do go into my top 10 favorite horror films of the year i do have five honorable mentions there were a lot of horror films that i really dug but these five just missed the cut now these are in no particular order but my honorable mentions of 2017 horror films are mother alien covenant xx happy death day and Cult of Chucky. I dug all these films, but they did not make it in my top 10. Now with that being said, let's jump into my top 10 favorite horror films of 2017. Get on! Number 10. Starting off at number 10 is not only a psychological thriller, but it also turned out to be the next film in M. Night Shyamalan's grand superhero reality, and that is Split. I think that we can all agree that before the visit, M. Night Shyamalan was going through a very very rough patch to say the least. But then the visit hit, which made me think, you know what, maybe M. Night Shyamalan still has it in him, and then Split proved to me that M. Night Shyamalan still has it. When M. Night Shyamalan is working with lower budgets, that is when M. Night Shyamalan is at his best, making low budget psychological thrillers. And it turned out, hey, not only is this from a great psychological thriller, but it's also the sequel to Unbreakable? What? Great performances from Anya Taylor Joy and a very Oh, screw the performance from James McAvoy, who I have a feeling is not going to get nominated at all, and it's a damn shame because this is James McAvoy's best performance of his career, without a doubt. This film is shot well, it's scored well, the things that happened in this film had my spine chilled, and of course the twist ending is one of the best twist endings that Shyamalan has had in quite some time. I have nothing much more to say other than that split is number 10. <laughs> Number nine. Coming at number nine to me is the most underrated film of 2017, and that is A Cure for Wellness. This film has one of the best trailers I have seen in ages, and when I walked into this movie, my god, this movie was something, seriously. From the performances by Jason Isaacs, Dane DeHaan, and Mia Goth, to the glorious cinematography, I mean seriously, this film is one of the most beautifully shot films of 2017. I mean, if this film should get nominated for any Oscar, it's the cinematography because my god this film looked glorious and to top it all off this film is such an amazing gothic mystery that had me invested from the very first frame to that awesome creepy final shot of Dane DeHaan and Mia Goth just pedaling away from the wellness center I mean that face that Dane DeHaan has stayed with me for quite some time now is a cure for wellness flawed sure it is there were a few things that I did feel like were left hanging and there were a couple things that did confuse me but nonetheless I dug the hell out of a cure for wellness I feel like this film should have made so much more than it did and I feel like this film does not get the credit it deserves and to top it all off this film creeped me the hell out on numerous occasions while watching this movie but yeah all in all my most underrated film of 2017 is also my ninth favorite horror film of 2017 Number eight. Coming in number eight is a film that I wish had gotten a theatrical release because this film is such a different found footage horror film for the rest of the pack, and that is The Dark Tapes. And this was my most anticipated horror film of 2017, so as you can imagine, I was highly looking forward to this film. The best way I could describe The Dark Tapes like this, it's pretty much VHS 2, but with a much, much, much lower budget. Like, I think this film costs, I think... 15 to 20 grand to make and for that budget the filmmakers did an amazing job for what they could have done with this film the thing I like about the dark tapes the most is not just the variety that this film has with each subgenre of horror but how it plays out you feel like this film is gonna go one way and then it just turns on you like for example the ending of the first tape still gets me to this day and the ending of the entire film I was just like okay that was cool. There were a lot of occasions that the film did scare the crap out of me. And not to mention this film doesn't have a single jump scare. 
Thank God it did not. And from what I've been hearing that this film is currently in development for a sequel, I wanted to see that sequel because, man, the dark tapes really impressed me. And also, for a very low-budget horror film, this film has much better acting than some of the bigger-budget horror films out there. Number 7 Last year's horror film prequel to a crappy movie was Ouija Origin of Evil, a film that I loved. This year's horror film prequel to a crappy film and not my number 7 is Annabelle Creation. I actually didn't mind the first Annabelle too much. Was it a great film in particular? No, but it was a decent haunted house ride. I didn't really think too much of it, but Annabelle Creation was everything that the first Annabelle should have been and more. David F. Sandberg came in from Lights Out to direct this film, and my god, did he inject so much of a thrill into the Annabelle franchise. While this film did have more jump scares than most horror films on this list, nonetheless, Annabelle Creation did creep me the hell out with some amazing one-shot take suspense sequences that had me cowering in fear. Fear. And if Ouija Origins of Evil didn't have any proof whatsoever, Annabelle Creation further stamps my belief that Lulu Wilson will be the next Scream Queen. I mean, seriously, Lulu Wilson is on a roll right now. Annabelle Creation gives me so much to look forward to with the future of the Conjuring Cinematic Universe, starting with Next Year with The Nun, which I cannot wait for now. While Annabelle Creation wasn't the best horror film of the year, I had an absolute blast with it, and that is why Annabelle Creation is my number seven. Number six. Coming in my number six is the weirdest psychological thriller I have seen in years, and that is The Killing of a Sacred Deer. Now, to put it in simple terms, The Killing of a Sacred Deer fucked me up so much mentally. The Killing of a Sacred Deer is such a different psychological thriller in that this movie plays out unlike any thriller I have ever seen before. Just from how the plot plays out and how it goes along, the more it goes out, the more unsettling, and the more just like, what the fuck? Did it get me going constantly? Now, while the performances by Colin Farrell and Nicole Kidman are great, it's a performance by Barry Keoghan that I'm going to remember from years to come because while Barry Keoghan gives a very monotone performance, his presence and just how he comes off was so essential that every time he was on screen, I cringed and I was like this. Who the fuck is this guy? Oh! This film is one of the most unique thrillers I have ever seen. And the only reason why this film is not higher on my list is because the film I do feel like is a tad too long and it is a one and done because the film just messed me up psychologically. But nonetheless, Killing of a Sacred Deer is one of the most unique psychological thrillers I have seen. I dug the hell out of it and that is why it is my number six. Number five. Alrighty guys, I'm ready for the ARE YOU KIDDING ME? comments because while this film was loved by the critics, the audiences despise this film. However, I'm with the critics that loved it because coming at number five for me is It Comes at Night. This film from moment one had me absorbed. While I'm not going to lie, this film was a very paper thin plot. This film, the reason why I love this film so much is not only was this film a just a great character study on survival, but the fact that this film was just dripping, I mean soaked in atmosphere. This film from moment one had such a dreary and a dark tone that almost squeezed the life out of you and it just did not let go of you into the final frame. And even after the final frame, I was like, that was heavy. Not to mention that the performances of this film are just stellar with Joel Edgerton giving one of his best performances. The thing I loved about It Comes Night the most was the fact that this film played out just like a telltale game where every decision that was made by the characters in this film would have a very deep impact by the film's ending. And by the ending of the film, oh my god. Now while this film wasn't in your face with scares, the atmosphere had me creeped and it had me so unsettled to the point where there was this one sequence that had me doing this. Oh god. Oh god. Oh! Oh shit! Number four. Coming number four, guys, is the horror film that I call the horror film for audiences, and that film is... Get Out. Now, the reason why I love Get Out so much, not only because I thought this film completely subverted the horror genre, but because it tackles not only social commentary, but racism in such a smart manner. And you guys know what I'm talking about, that one plot twist that I know everyone was just like, holy shit. And not to mention, this film was so damn hysterical. And I call this the horror film for audiences because horror films the past so many times, audiences have yelled at the screen because the main characters have made the dumbest decisions where pretty much where the main character 
is the audience. But no, seriously, Get Out is such an awesome horror comedy because this film is hysterical and I hope that this film does get an Oscar nomination from best original screenplay because I haven't seen a horror film done like this in ages. Jordan Peele did an amazing job for his directorial debut and I cannot wait to see where he and his actors careers go after this. Alright guys, coming number three is a horror film that everybody and I mean Everybody was looking forward to, including myself, because I was not a fan of the 90s miniseries, but I absolutely love the 2017 version of it so much. Now, like I said, I was not a fan of the 90s miniseries. I didn't find it that scary except for a few scenes. I didn't really care about the kids, but I loved Tim Curry's Pennywise. This film was essentially everything that I wanted the miniseries to be. The kids in this movie were amazing. These kids were perfectly cast with Finn Wolfhard from Stranger Things, I think giving the best performance of the entire film besides Jaden Lieber, I believe, playing Bill, the leader of the Losers Club, who I thought was also brilliant. And to top it all off with an amazing performance from Bill Skarsgård as Pennywise, I mean, oh my god. And then that voice, oh my god. Oh. Well, Georgie, I'm Pennywise the Dancing Clown. Now we aren't strangers anymore, are we? Oh my god, that voice makes me shiver so much. But one of the reasons why I love this movie so much is because this movie was much more than a horror film. It was a drama, it was a coming of age film, and not to mention it was a very funny comedy. It was a film that I loved so much. I didn't want this film to end, and the moment it did end, I wanted part two immediately. Number two! Coming in number two, guys, is the only foreign film on my list, but nonetheless, I was highly, and I mean, highly anticipating this film not only because of course it was marketed as a horror film but because of all the reports i'd read from film festivals of people saying they were either fainting or vomiting but my god i loved raw so much raw is one of the few times where upon watching i expected a certain type of film but upon it ending i got something completely different and i loved that it gave me something different raw while it is marketed as a horror film it is more of a coming of age drama with some horror elements to it. Now, I know a lot of people that will not watch Raw mainly because of its subject of cannibalism. And cannibalism, don't get me wrong, is a very messed up thing. But here's the thing. Raw has probably the most human portrayal of cannibalism I have ever seen in a film because it doesn't concentrate on people eating other people. While there is maybe one or two scenes that the way that Raw uses cannibalism is of how people are exploring their kinks in the bedroom. And how this is explored in this movie had me so engrossed and so just invested in this girl's journey at this veterinarian school that I could not stop watching this film. Geron's Miller's performance in this film is absolutely stellar. I hope to see her in an English language film. Not to mention this film is a hell of a directorial debut from Julia Ducournau, who I cannot wait to see more work from in the future. And when it comes to those reports of fainting and vomiting, I will not lie, there was a scene in this movie involving someone like pulling hair from their throats. That scene had me, ugh. Hold on. It's making me gag just thinking about it. It's number one. Alrighty guys, here we are. My favorite horror film of 2017. The horror film that not only I love the most, the one that scared me the most, but also the one that unsettled me to the core the very most. This was a horror film I was looking forward to for two reasons. One, because it was a Stephen King novel, but it was also because this is a director that is one of my favorite directors working today, but after seeing this film, but cements him as my favorite in the horror genre. My number one favorite horror film of 2017 is... Gerald's Game. Mike Flanagan is a master of the horror genre. He is a god of the horror genre. Every time that I see that Mike Flanagan is going to direct a new horror film, I am always in. Gerald's Game has amazing performances from Carl Guagino and Bruce Greenwood, and I am praying that Carl Guagino gets nominated for Best League Actress because this performance from hers is her best performance period. The psychological games that she plays in her had only made this movie that much more of a thrill to watch. The reason why I love this horror film above all other horror films this year is because this film is one of those rare horror films that just 
escalate the genre. This is one of those few horror films that is more than a horror film. It's not only a horror film, but it's a captivity movie, it's a drama, it's a thriller, it's a survival thriller. And there was that one sequence which was by far the scariest sequence of the entire year, which I will not spoil for you guys if you haven't seen it. Not only from the writing to the acting, the cinematography, the score, and the ending of this film, the ending of Gerald's Game is one of the best horror endings I have seen this decade. Gerald's Game was a film that not only fried me to the core, but it also had me absorbed into its narrative, but it also, by the end, it had me wanting to rewatch this film over and over again. If you guys have Netflix, if you guys haven't seen this film, you are missing out on one of the best horror films, not only of the year, but of the decade. And that is why Gerald's Game is my number one. One. Alrighty guys, and that concludes my top 10 favorite horror films of 2017. I hope you guys enjoyed the list. Comment down, let me know below what were your top 10 favorite horror films, or if you can't name them 10, name your top 5 horror films there, and name a few more little mentions while you're at it too. If you guys want to follow me on social media, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, and I'm also on Snapchat, so if you guys want to follow me on all those social media platforms, all the links in the museums are in the description below. I hope you guys enjoyed my top 10 favorite horror films of 2017. If so, please hit that like button, share, and subscribe to see more videos just like this one. If you guys want to see my review of The Disaster Artist, please click right here. And if you guys want to see my review of Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, please click right here. And of course, until the next video or review, I will see you guys next time.